Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you are doing good. In this video, we are going to discuss some of the important questions based on the chapter Python Fundamentals. Before solving the questions, you should have a clear understanding of the basics. For that, let's go through the topics of this chapter in short. The most important topic is tokens. Here is the definition of the token. It is the smallest individual unit of the program. To write sentences, we use alphabets and some punctuation symbols. In the same way, to write statement of the programming language, we will be using tokens. And here is the list of the tokens. The first token is keyword, second is identifier, third is literal. We will be using operators also to design the statement and some punctuation symbols. Punctuators are just symbols, but you should be familiar with these four tokens very well. So let's go through these tokens in short so that it will be easy to solve the questions. First is keyword. Keyword is nothing but a special word which has special meaning to the programming language. We cannot use those words for our purpose. You can see here, here is the table of the keywords. Python is case sensitive language and we generally use lower case letters. That's why all the keywords are also in lower case. But there is an exception to that. These three keywords are different. We write the first alphabet of these three keywords in capital. The second token is identifier. Identifier is nothing but names which we give to variables, functions or classes. As these names are user defined names but to give the name we must follow certain rules. So here are the rules. You should be well familiar with these rules because you will be getting MCQs in which you need to identify valid or invalid identifier. These type of questions you will be getting in class 11 and class 12th too. So what's the first rule? Always the first character will be letter or underscore. Other than that nothing is allowed. Digits are allowed but not as a first character. We got to know that we can use letters and digits. But from the special symbols we can use only underscore. Other than that no special symbol is allowed. Even for designing identifier you cannot use any keyword. And uppercase and lowercase are different you know because python is a case sensitive language. From identifier let's discuss the variables because this is also important topic as a basic. One type of identifier that is variables we are gonna discuss. Variables are used to hold the values but in python variables are name labels which are reference to the memory. Python allows dynamic typing that's why there is no need to mention the data type of the variable in the beginning. The value which will assign to that variable will decide the data type of the variable. Here name is of string type, age is of integer and this price is of float type. The second important token is literals. Literals are nothing but constants. When we assign any value to a variable, we write variables on the left hand side and on the right hand side we write literals. In the simple words, we can call it as a constants. That's why according to the different data types, we have different literals. The first is string literal. If we assign value to this variable name, it will called as a string literal. In python, we can enclose this string literal in single quote or even in double quotes. The second type of literal is numeric literal. When we talk about numbers, there are three types of numbers, integer, float and the third one is complex. We know that integer are the numbers without decimal point, floats are with decimal point and the complex numbers which follows this pattern a plus bj in python. In the previous chapters, we have studied different types of number system. So when we talk about integer, we have different ways to represent the number. The first is decimal integer literals, then we have octal and the third one is hexadecimal. That's why integer literals has three types, decimal, octal and hexadecimal. Then what about float numbers? We can represent float numbers in two types. First is fractional form and the second one is exponent form. If you want to go through all the topics in detail, I would suggest you to watch this video. Here we have discussed it thoroughly. The third form of number is complex number. This is the real part and this is the imaginary part. 
द थर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ द लिटरल इज बुलिन यू नो बुलिन मीन्स ट्रू और फॉल्स इन पाइथन देर आर टू की वर्ड्स विच वी कैन यूज एज अ कॉन्स्टंट ऑल्सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट फर्स्ट लेटर इज कैपिटल मूविंग अहेड टू द नेक्स्ट लिटरल दैट इज नन नन इज अ स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ द लिटरल विच इंडिकेट्स एबसेंस ऑफ वैल्यू दिस वी कैन यूज एज अ कॉन्स्टंट यू कैन इनिशलाइज नन टू एनी वेरिएबल हियर इज द लास्ट टाइप ऑफ द लिटरल दैट इज लिटरल कलेक्शन इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ द कलेक्शन डेटा टाइप लाइक लीज टपल स्ट्रिंग एंड डिक्शनरी दैट वॉज ऑल अबाउट द कॉन्स्टेंट्स मूविंग अहेड टू द नेक्स्ट टोकन दैट इज ऑपरेटर्स ऑपरेटर्स आर कैटेगराइज इंटू टू टाइप्स द फर्स्ट इज यूनरी एंड द सेकेंड वन इज बायनरी यूनरी ऑपरेटर्स ऑपरेट ऑन अ सिंगल ऑपरेंट यू कैन राइट माइनस टेन और प्लस फाइव एंड नॉट इज ऑल्सो अ यूनरी ऑपरेटर मैक्सिमम ऑपरेटर्स आर बायनरी ऑपरेटर्स मीन्स इट ऑपरेट ऑन टू ऑपरेंट्स द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज ऑपरेटर्स आर अरिथमेटिक ऑपरेटर्स रिलेशनल ऑपरेटर्स and the third category is logical operators even we will be using membership operator assignment operator to assign value to the variable and there is a category of identity operators and there are some bitwise operators also in this chapter this is also one of the important topic we need to understand that is how to use there are three parameters the first is objects objects means the message or the value of the variable which you need to print the second parameter is separator it decides the separator between two objects by default it is space and the third parameter is end the default value is backslash n means after printing every object you will come to the next line that you can modify now you know how to display the output you should also know how to take the input for that we will be using input function here is the syntax input function takes the prompt that will get displayed this is optional you can skip it if you will skip it message will not get printed only cursor will wait for your input look at the simple example with the input statement we are giving this prompt that's why the prompt will get displayed and then the cursor will wait here for your input now the user will type the input that input will get stored in the variable and here we are just printing it one thing you should always remember about input function that whatever you give the input it will automatically will get converted to string value if you want to convert this value to integer you will use integer function and close the whole input function in the integer function in the same way to convert the value into float you will enclose the whole input statement in the float statement I think we have covered all the topics which are necessary to solve the questions. I would highly recommend you to go through the video in which we have covered all the topics in detail. Now it's time to check out the questions. The first format of the question will be in the form of MCQs. Let's check out which of the following identifiers are invalid. These type of questions are very important. You will be getting these type of questions in the board exam too. look at the first option the starting character is digit that's why this is invalid in the second option we are using special symbol exclamation so this is also invalid look at the third option this identifier follows all the rule that's why this is valid even the last option satisfies all the criteria this is also valid so invalid identifiers are in the option a and b Moving ahead to the second MCQ is Python case sensitive when dealing with identifier and the correct answer is yes If you are writing identifier with capital letters it is completely different from the identifier with small case even if you write mix of it it will be different so all these three identifiers are different Here is the third MCQ the smallest individual unit of a program is called and from the option we know the correct option is token what's the next question state the output of the statement look at the code in this code we are adding some numbers and initializing it to a variable but while adding the numbers some numbers we have written in the new line if you want to continue in the multiple lines you need to end the previous line using backslash 
this code is perfectly fine if you will not write this backslash you will get the error so when we will print the value of the variable we will get 45 so b is the correct choice all right let's proceed the next question is based on literals we just now discuss the literals there are total five types of literals out of that we discuss the four types in detail the last one was related to collection that we will be discussing in the coming videos anytime if you know the answer pause the video and try to solve it yourself the first literal is enclosed in a single code that's why it is a string literal look at the second one the second literal is getting started with 0x this is nothing but a hexadecimal integer literal moving ahead to the third one we can note down that there are some decimal numbers so this is nothing but a floating point literal finally the last one is a boolean literal because true and false comes under the boolean literals let's proceed to the next question we need to define the following terms the first is keyword keywords are the special words which has special meaning to the programming language the second term is identifier identifiers are the names which are given to the different parts of the program and the third term is literals literals are nothing but the constants let's check out the next question name the boolean literals there are two boolean literals first is true and the second one is false here is one more format of the question you will be getting based on this chapter we need to predict the output of the following code in the first line multiple variables are initialized 10 is initialized to x and 20 will get initialized to y look at the second statement let's evaluate the right hand side first x is getting incremented by 50 the value of x is 10 so x plus 50 will be 60 now let's evaluate the second expression y plus 100 the value of y is 20 20 plus 100 will be 120 now let's check out the left hand side part here y comma x is mentioned so 60 will get initialized to y and 120 will get initialized to x how and what we are printing will come to know from this print statement first of all we are printing x the value of x is 120 here separator parameter is used that will come in between there are three stars followed by the second object that is y the value of y is 60 so here is the final output hope you understood this explanation let's move ahead to the second question a is 11 b is 22 and c is 33 let's evaluate the right hand side c minus 5 the value of c is 33 33 minus 5 the second expression is a plus 6 the value of a is 11 then plus 6 what about the next expression b minus 7 the value of b is 22 minus 7 33 minus 5 will be 28 11 plus 6 will be 17 and 22 minus 7 will be 15 let's check out the print statement we are printing the value of a followed by value of b and the value of c here we are using the end parameter it is not backslash n which is the default value so we will not move to the next line we will print the dollar symbol three times in the same line now what's the second print statement we need to print the value of p q r this is nothing but p 17 is q and r is 15 according to the print statement we need to print these values but with the separator that's why we will print 28 then separator is two hash symbols the second value is 17 then again we will print hash symbol two times and then finally we will print 15 in this way we got the output hope you understood this explanation too here is one more format of the question in which you need to identify the syntax error generally this will be for two marks so you will be getting four syntax errors here you need to underline the corrections and you need to write the proper explanation too. If we look at the first statement you can see here the opening bracket of the input function is missing. When you will rewrite the code underline it and write the explanation. Moving ahead to the second statement. The closing double quotes for this prompt is missing so write the explanation accordingly. 
when we look at the third statement here colon is used which is invalid we should not use colon finally we are at the last statement we use comma to separate the message and the variable name so write the explanation accordingly comma is missing we have one more question based on the same format this is for one mark so you need to find out the two errors the first statement is okay but b is not initialized to any value so you will get the error here in the third statement a is capital for this and logical operator you should write and operator like this there is one more question where you need to find out the result of the following code 10 is initialized to x then hello string is initialized to x when we will print x what we will get it this is an assignment to you let me know the answer in the comments below based on this chapter you will be getting one more type of question where you need to write the code here you need to write only simple programs based on the concept of input process and output generally it will be based on certain formula that we will cover in the next video that's the wrap for today's video. In case of any doubt, let me know in the comments below. In the next video, we will write simple Python program. So, until next time, stay curious, stay healthy. I will see you in the next video.